morning. Let's pray. Father, we just pray that you will make your presence known here today in a very powerful way. It's a, after hearing these beautiful praise songs that you are all to us. And I heard the words in the way here this morning that if what if I truly believed Christ in me? And we do believe that Christ, you are in us. And is there anything that is not possible when we allow you to do your works through us? So I just pray for open eyes, spiritual eyes and spiritual ears today. I pray that you help me to stay focused on your word this morning that it may be presented fully through the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. If you have your Bible with you today, if you'd want to open to John 17, 1. <clears throat> it says, When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you. For God to experience his own glory, he glorified the Son. And the Son became glorified through obedience to the Father. God created us so that he may experience himself. God's desire is to experience his glory. And his plan for accomplishing this is to glorify his children through obedience. <clears throat> It is through this obedience to God's authority that God's glory is then returned to him. God glorifies to be glorified. Now this is not accomplished by our actions, only by obedience. As in, we cannot do an act as a means to glorifying the Father. It is only when that action is a result of God glorifying himself through us that it becomes glorifying to God. You know that um, two people, two believing people, can both do the exact same action, and one action will be glorifying to God, and the other action won't? Because one is doing the action as a means to glorifying to God, and the other, the action is a result of God glorifying himself through them. God glorifies to be glorified. Just to better help understand this, let's take first a look at the relationship between the Father and the Son. We have the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit all moving as one. Now the Father, when he moves, the Son moves with him. They move as one. But what is this connection? What causes this movement, the Son moving with the Father? This isn't a forced relationship, as in when the Father moves, the Son is sort of drug along with the Father. And there's, there's no ropes or cables or forced relationship here. What causes this relationship for the Son to move with the Father is that the Son has chosen to be in complete obedience to the will and authority of the Father. It's not the action, it's the obedience. If the Son were to step out of that obedience... Any action he did is now an action as a means to rather than an action that is a result of God glorifying himself through him. It is only in this relationship that that connection is maintained, God glorifying to be glorified. Let's go to John 5.30. This is Jesus speaking, and he says, I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not my will, but the will of him who sent me. Jesus is telling us that outside of the will of the Father, if he chose to be outside of this relationship, he can do nothing on his own. Any action he does is not glorifying to the Father, because now it did not come from the Father. It is only in this obedience to the authority and the will of the Father that the Son becomes glorified, which glorifies the Father. God glorifies to be glorified. The Son has a will, 
But he says, I seek not my will, but your will. He chooses to be in obedience to the will of the Father. Let's go to John 14.10. Jesus again is speaking and says, Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does what? Does his works. So Jesus is saying that I will not even speak outside of this connection. I will only speak what the Father has told me to speak. And I, it is only in this position that the Father does his works through the Son. If, like I said, if the Son stepped out of that obedience, that connection is broken. Any action out here is an action as a means to rather than a result of God glorifying himself through the Son. So we have the Father and the Son moving as one. Son and the Father, the Father in the Son. They are moving as one, two in one. So what about the Holy Spirit? Where is the Holy Spirit in this? Let's look at John 16, 13. Jesus here is speaking about the Holy Spirit. And he says, When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, hearing being the very big part of all this, whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. So now we have the Father and the Son moving as one. The Holy Spirit not speaking anything on his own authority. Choosing to be in obedience to what the Son tells him. The Son will not tell him anything other than what the Father has told him. All three now moving as one. From the Father to the Son revealed by the Holy Spirit. God glorifies to be glorified. So now we have the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit all moving as one. Now we can trust and fully believe and know that the Son and the Holy Spirit will never step out of this. They have chosen to be in obedience to the Father, and they always will be. But what about us? Where are we in this? We're the X factor. We're the ones that choose whether or not we are going to be in this. Let's go to John 16, 14. Jesus again talking about the Holy Spirit. He says, He will glorify me. And he says, How? For what he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. So now when we ask and hear, we can, the Holy Spirit will reveal to us what it is for us to be obedient to so that we can step into this. And the Holy Spirit will not give us anything other than what the Son has told him to give us. And the Son, not telling the Holy Spirit, anything than what the Father has given him. So as God moves, all moving as one, if we choose to ask, to hear, and then to obey what the Holy Spirit is revealing to us, that we are doing the Father's will through the Son revealed by the Holy Spirit to us. It's never about the action that glorifies God, only the obedience. So how do we get into this? How do we know what it is we're supposed to be obedient to. All believers may be glorified to glorify God by making three choices. The first choice is making the choice to ask. The second is the choice to hear. And then third is making the choice to obey. Again, it's never about the action, only about the obedience. The action as a means to will not glorify God. It is only when the action is a result of God glorifying himself through us that it glorifies God. So the first choice is the choice to ask. In John 14, 13 and 14, Jesus says, Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. So you must first ask what is the will of the Father for us today? Do not assume we already know what that is. 
the world around us changes all the time. People in our lives come and go. Every day, there are different situations than the day before. So we do not assume that we already know what the will of God is for us today without asking. We ask often, daily, what is it that you have for me today? What is it that you want me to do today? Because don't assume that it will be the same as yesterday, or today it will be the same, or tomorrow it will be the same as today. Situations, circumstances change in our lives daily. Like I said, new people come in and out of our lives. He might have something new for us today than yesterday. How can we be obedient if we have never even asked what it is that he wants us to be obedient to? So we have to ask. The second choice, then, after we've chosen to ask, is the choice to hear. Matthew 11, 15 says, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. To hear is a choice. To have ears to hear is a choice. What I mean is, in order to hear, we have to be in relationship. We have to be in prayer and be in the Word. And Jesus will speak to us either audibly or through scripture or through signs, but we have to take that time to listen. You know, in that other verse before this, when Jesus said, whatever you ask in my name, this I will do. Skipped over a part there, and that is that Jesus is saying, whatever you ask in my name, that will glorify the Father, this I will give to you. So we ask anything in Jesus' name that will glorify the Father, He will give it to us. So if we ask, he will tell us. We have to make that choice to listen. And the biggest one of all, for me in my life, is most of all, be willing to hear. I cannot tell you how many times I've prayed, tell me what you want me to do today. And as soon as he begins to tell me, I even went so far as just prayed louder. Drowned it out. (laughs) Because... I'm not truly willing to hear. That is when most of us, or myself, become fearful. Because if he tells me and I hear, well, now I'm accountable. And so many times this is where, you know, I don't want to, I'm not really willing to hear. And I might just ignore it or pretend like I didn't hear it. But the biggest one is I... Being in the flesh is, you know, tell me what you want me to do today. And then as soon as he begins telling me, Lord, tell me what you want me to do today. Just drown it out. Get louder. Drown it out. So we have to be willing to hear. Because if we don't ask, we don't hear. Any action we do will not be glorifying to God because it didn't come from God. We have to be in this relationship, asking, hearing, and obeying to be moving with God Now the action has become a result of God glorifying himself through us. And uh, once we've chosen to ask, once we've chosen to hear, then we make that choice to obey. Again, this is, you know, I can only speak for myself, but this is where uh, it gets tough. I mean, because like I said, now you've asked and you've heard, now you're accountable. And obedience is not a natural thing. It's not natural for us to be obedient. Nobody likes being told what to do. In Hebrews, uh, Jesus, or the word tells us that even this, although he was a son, talking about Jesus, although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. So obedience is a learned behavior. It's not in our nature to simply just be obedient. I remember uh, when I was like five or six years old, I was in the shop with my dad, and he was torching, running a torch. He was, uh, I don't remember for sure what he was making, but he was heating up iron to the point where he could bend it, and he had some parts laying there, and they were glowing orange hot. I remember asking, why is that glowing orange? He said, it's very hot. Don't touch it. As soon as he, you know what happened, as soon as he turned away, I was like, ooh. Yeah, burned my finger. And another time, um, painting in there, 
I was about that same age, and I had paint all over my hands. He said, I'm going to go get some gas to clean your hands. Don't touch anything. You know, he didn't get the door shut. Now he's grabbing stuff. It's not in our nature to be obedient. It's not always our natural response. But then we make that choice to obey. In 1 Peter 1, 13 and 14, it says, Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hopes fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, that as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. Do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. Now in that instance, when I touched that hot metal, it took one time, and I learned it. But man, I got a much longer list of things that I returned to the passions of my former ignorance. I, you know, we should know, we know better. When we do things, we suffer for it, we know better. Do not return to the passions of your former ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy. Now the blood of Christ, when we accepted that and we stepped underneath that blood and we became saved, he made us holy. We're holy. Believers are holy. If you believe, you have been made holy. But then it says, now that you are holy, go and be holy. Your holy will act holy in all your conduct. That's where a lot of us got some goof here. You are holy, and now go and be holy. We know we're holy, but now go be holy. That's where, you know, that's where this comes in. Is how can we be holy? How can we know what He wants us to do to be holy? Now that we're holy, unless we ask, and then we choose to hear. And then we choose to be obedient to that. I just want to make sure we get this picture of the Father and the Son moving as one, God glorifying by the Son's obedience, which glorifies the Father. And when the Holy Spirit, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, all moving as one, God glorifying through us. You understand how you're getting that picture? If anybody stepped out of this, if the Son stepped out of this, which he never will, now that connection is broken. Any action out here will not glorify the Father because it didn't come from the Father. It's only in obedience did the action come from the Father and is now a result of God glorifying himself. So having asked what is God's will for us, having chosen to hear what that will is, and having chosen to be obedient to his authority, only in this position does the action glorify God. God will glorify himself through us. We cannot act as a means to, but only when the action is a result of is it glorifying to God. You know, and Scripture also tells us that if our answer is yes, I am willing to do the will of God, <clears throat> if our answer is yes to that before we ask, we will know that the teaching comes from God. The scripture tells us that if we are willing to do, we will know that it comes from God, what he wants us to do. So we will not be led astray in this. If we are asking and we don't know if our answer will be yes, that's what opens the door to the enemy to deceive. But if our answer is yes, I will do the will of God before we ask, scripture says you will know where the teaching come from, that it came from me. So we ask, and we hear, and we obey, and we realize that it's not about the action, but the obedience. And we are in this. And we are asking, and we are hearing, and we are choosing to obey, and we are in this, all moving as one. One of two things happens. If we are not in continual communication, asking daily, what is it you have for me to do for you today? One of two things happens. We're in this, and we're not in that communication, and then God has something new for us, something new he wants us to do, you know, a new thing that he wants us to do today. And God moves to that, and we stay. 
Well, if we were in communication, asking and hearing what he wants us to do or be obedient to, and he has something new for us, and he moves to that, what happened to this action, though? This action is not glorified or glorifying God because this action no longer came from God. He had something new for us to do, but we didn't move into that. The second thing that happens is we're in this, and we're not in constant communication, asking, hearing, and obeying. And as believers, I'm easily distracted. I have a hard time staying focused, and shiny, jingling things make me turn. What happens sometimes is we'll see somebody else that is glorifying God. We think, wow, I would like to glorify God that way. Or we think of it something that nobody else is doing. We think, wow, I would like to glorify God that way. We think, I want to glorify God, and I want to glorify God in this way, so I'm going to go glorify God in that way. But he has us over here, but we step away from that. I want to do this. I want to do it this way. I want to glorify God the way I want to. This action out here is really glorifying self. In uh, John 8:54, Jesus said, or Jesus answered, "If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say is our God." So out here, it's glorifying self, and that glory is nothing. Because an action is a means to and not a result of. That action did not come from God because he had something else for us. We're here. There is a group of people, Jesus tells us of another group of people that got together. Now they believed in God and they believed that he sent his son And they believed it in such a way that they decided we're going to go out and we're going to glorify God. They said, we're going to go out, and they did did these actions. They said, we'll go out and we'll say, Lord, Lord, and we'll prophesy in his name. And they said, Lord, we'll, we'll go out and say, Lord, Lord, and cast out demons in his name. We will go out and we'll do many things, many powerful deeds, and glorify him. In Matthew 7, 21, 23, Jesus says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name, and in your name cast out demons and do many powerful deeds? And Jesus said to him, Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Go away from me, you lawbreakers. Now, for us as believers, what I'm talking about today, allowing God to glorify himself through us, isn't a salvation issue like it was for these people. But the principle holds the same, that any action we do that did not come from the Father, Jesus will say, I don't know you in this action. I mean, these sound like pretty good actions, don't they? Go out and prophesy in Jesus' name, in his name. Go out and cast demons in his name and do many powerful deeds. But the action did not come from God. They were doing the action as a means to. I'm going to go glorify God in this way, the way I want to, the way I choose to. Rather than it being a result of God glorifying himself through them. Only when the action comes from God is it glorifying to God. And, uh, you know, this is... That verse, too, is kind of a side message here, but if that ver- those verses don't really bring home the difference between believing in and believing in two, I mean, that really needs to bring that home. That image of that chair we've seen so many times, the difference between believing in the chair and believing into it. Like, I can believe that chair will hold me. There's no power in that. It isn't until I sit in it that it's giving him the opportunity to fulfill his promise. I mean, if those verses don't really bring that home, the difference between believing in and believing in two, it just just really should bring that home. What about this, back to this glorifying God? 
What does that mean for being in service of the church or serving God or congregation? Any congregation, you know, not here, anywhere. What makes that serving glorifying? And the hard reality is, is that any person can come in here or any other congregation, a non-believer, an atheist, whatever, anyone can come in here and pour the coffee and make coffee. Anybody can come in here and set up or take down chairs. Anybody can come in here and sing a song or lead a Bible study or even stand here and read all the same scriptures and all the same notes that I've just told you. But it would just be actions. When we're in this and we choose to ask and to hear and then to obey and we are in this, all moving as one, that's what makes the pouring of the coffee or making a coffee glorifying to God or setting up the chairs and taking them down. That's what makes it glorifying to God or singing a beautiful praise song. It is in this that makes that glorifying to God because now it is no longer just an action as a means to, but it is an action as a result of. God glorifies to be glorified. And it is in that that makes it possible to be obedient to what has been revealed by the Holy Spirit who will give us nothing other than what he received from the Son, who gives us nothing other than what is received from the Father, all moving as one that makes standing here glorifying to God. And we want to be in this. We want this. We want to be in the will of the Father because this is where the abundant life is. This is where people are healed through our hands. This is where we begin to see with spiritual eyes and hear with spiritual ears. It is in this where the seeds are sown and the harvest reaped. God does the increase, but it is only in this that the seeds are thrown into fertile soil because the action came from God. It is a result of, not a means to. And this is how God answers the prayer that he taught us to pray in Matthew 6.10 when he says, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It is only when we are in his will, we've chosen to ask, chosen to hear, and then choose to obey, that we are in this and it is now God glorifying himself through us. Any action stepped out of this is an action that is not glorifying because it's not from God. Understand? <laughs> you know, I, I don't know how many times I went through this, and every time it took about 20 minutes longer than it did today. <laughs> so, <laughs> I guess God takes out the rubbish and just gives you the good stuff. Well, let's pray. Father, please help us to always take the time and recognize we need to take the time to ask you what you have for us today. And help us to be willing and to have ears to hear. Take away any fear that we might have of hearing what it is that you want us to do. Help us to always be in your will. We know that is a choice that we make. Obedience is a choice. It wouldn't be obedience if it wasn't a choice. So we always put in our hearts that a desire and a passion for you and your word and use us to bring your will here on earth as it is in heaven. Help us to always stay in constant relationship with you. Remove from us any worldly desire that makes us 
want to step out of that will to do our own thing, even if that own thing, we claim it to be for your glory. We know that if we step into this, we are glorified. Just as the Son was glorified through his obedience, and the Holy Spirit is glorified through his obedience, we too become glorified when we step into your will, and that glorifies you. Allow us to never step out of that so that you may experience your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.